Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today BidShares and the ASX will be discussing the investment opportunity within Australian technology, a rapidly growing space but one that's been traditionally quite underweight in the Australian market and Australian investment portfolios. We will begin the webinar very shortly. Just before that, uh, we have a poll that we'd like you to take part in that um, is just looking at whether you're already investing in the um, BeatShares Australian Technology ETF, ATEC. That poll is with you now, so if you could answer that. Fantastic. And it seems like a lot of people there either invested or really here to gain some more information about the fund and, and the space in general. So um, yes, thank you again for joining. Um, before we start, um, just be aware that a recording of the session will be sent to all attendees. We will also be answering any questions you have during the session, um, at the end of the session. So you can post those throughout and between Max and myself, we will look to answer as many of those as we can at the end. Just an important disclaimer, um, please be aware that any information discussed today is general advice only. It does not take into account your personal circumstances. There are risks with any investment and please seek financial advice and read the PDS before make any investment and importantly past performance is not indicative of future returns. Here at Beach Shares, we're one of Australia's largest ETF providers. We manage over $11.5 billion currently. We have the widest range of ETFs on the Australian market and a plethora of content for you to read our newsletters and join us on our website there. My name is Alastair Mills. I am look after the portfolio analytics and broker and institutional channels here at Beta Shares. I'm extremely pleased to be joined by Max Cunningham, who is the Executive General Manager of Issuer Services and Investment Products at the ASX. This makes him extremely well placed to give some detailed insight about the Australian technology space, particularly in regards to new listings and growth from the context of the ASX. So thank you, Max, and I will hand over to you there. Great, thank you. And I, I, firstly, thanks, Alistair, and great to be here with BetaShares today. Uh, I might just echo the disclaimer, I'm not an advisor. I'm here purely to talk about ASX uh, as a capital market. Uh, and, uh, and really, uh, what's unique about ASX, uh, both uh, globally and how we've been able to sort of create uh, quite a unique uh, 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 ecosystem for tech listing. So, um, so thank you. Thank you. Um, I might just kick off with a, the first slide here, which is sort of, you know, what is ASX? And you know, more importantly, how have we really been able to actually curate a unique uh, new industry being technology listings, largely from scratch? You know, we, we, we had a bit of a running base, of course, with the dot, dot com boom, and we, we, we were left with some great companies out of that, like Seek and REA uh, and car sales. But this slide, actually, if we go sort of um, from uh, uh, you know from about three o'clock uh, and reverse clockwise, we're the fourth largest pool of pensions globally. That's pretty extraordinary when you consider where Australia is, both in terms of population and GDP, uh, you know, which is in the mid to high teens. Um, we've had we, we've been over the last sort of five years cycling around about 120 new listings annually. That you know puts us in the sort of top five exchanges. All exchanges will be down this year, down materially, obviously, from um, uh, the COVID crisis. Um, but the other unique thing is we are trading around about $8 billion a day um, in average daily turnover. So that's attractive for both institutional investors and companies um, that know that they can get good pricing uh, at price discovery from their shares. And then finally, if we look at this, um, uh, 2,200 listed companies. So uh, we've, we've actually got a, a wide pool of companies, both um, small, medium and large. Um, and, and we have a listings framework that enables earlier stage companies to come courtesy of our history. I like to say we've been funding startups uh, for a century, um, but for most part, that's been in the mining sector. Um, and we've just um, simply moved from dirt to digital, um, if I could be uh, a little math there. But um, so the next slide, um, why tech? Why have we actually focused on tech? 
And uh, if you actually look at the uh, breakdown by number chart there, you'll see, as I said, uh, you know, just on 2,200 listed entities, it won't surprise you that the largest proportion of that is in the mining sector. Um, it might surprise you uh, that um, the 14% the, the, the of that, uh, you, know, the, you know, by number is, is, is technology. But actually, if we look at breakdown by market cap, um, you'll actually see our market is heavily concentrated. The green represents our mining sector. And then going clockwise, the dark blue, uh, the medium blue and the grey, uh, which constitutes sort of close to half of our market are what we sort of call, uh, you know, financials uh, and, uh, and, and, and real estate sort of uh, funds. So we would have a pie chart there that I would say is when we look at major markets around the world, heavily concentrated. And so our view and the goal of really developing a tech ecosystem was to bring diversity to our market. We see there the light blue uh, at the top near 11 o'clock on the breakdown by market cap uh, is actually reflecting the, um, the tech sector. 8% there, that's actually on the back of it having a little bit of a rally. It was a, you know, qu quite sm a bit smaller than that at the beginning of the year. But to put it into context, to put it into context, when we look at the S&P 500 in the US, around about 20% of that market um, is technology. And very simply, why would you, um, you know, want to look at tech stocks? Well, we might um, turn over uh, and come back to tech in a second and just talk about that as a, as a growth. But um, this actually is just a, a, a little bit of a reflection on um, both number of tech and also some of the uh, growth that we've had um, in, the, uh, in, in the past sort of five years in this strategy. The bar chart you'll see has grown uh, impressively from around about 100 to 200 uh, tech uh, companies. We've seen that flatten a little bit over the last few years, but there's been two driving factors for that. Firstly, we've been encouraging companies to delay listing um, and come when they're larger. So we've actually had fewer listings, but larger companies come to market. Then obviously we've also had M&A occurring in that space. Companies like MYOB and Aconex have been taken out. Um, so those figures are actually sort of uh, you know, effectively uh, uh, a, a reflection of that as well. If we look at the, uh, the line there, the tech sector, uh, it is our fastest growing sector um, by number of companies coming to market. Uh, as I said, uh, by number, it's our second largest sector um, of companies. Uh, thirdly, uh, global tech IPOs, we are number three uh, in the world. So that's pretty extraordinary, again, when you uh, think about it. And uh, it won't surprise you that uh, number one and number two are uh, actually uh, NASDAQ and NYSE. Uh, so we're punching very, very favourably there. Um, we've had around about $4 billion worth of capital uh, raised. Um, and we have now, as uh, the the, uh, the VC and tech guys like to call companies with valuations of greater than a billion dollars, uh, we've now got 23 of those companies listed that you'd um, designate tech unicorns. Um, and then if we look at 2019, um, you know, uh, yeah, I think it's we're, we're pretty proud to say that we've got a good, um, in, a good diverse cohort of international companies coming to market. Um, of course, we're very pleased and the goal is that technology, Australian companies, Australian tech companies can stay at home. So it's great that the largest tech listing, not only last year, but our largest tech listing in about three or four years um, was Homegrown and Tyro. Um, Finios out of Dublin, software provider, global business um, servicing the insurance business um, has done very well. And then uh, three companies that came through from the US uh, last year as well. So overall, it's been a uh, it's been a very very good uh, year, uh, you know, a good year and a good trend for tech companies. So um, why would we uh, look at tech? I talked about diversity, um, but actually, I think it's a bit more than that. Um, tech people talk about you know tech because it's it's uh, it's sexy, it's exciting, it is the future. Um, but the reality is tech is also about growth. Um, and if we look at the first chart here, which is the price performance since ASX listing by WiseTech, Afterpay, Appen, Altium and Xero. Um, WiseTech uh, faced some challenges last year with some, uh, uh, dare I say, some um, you know, information coming into the market that knocked their share price around. Um, but even WiseTech having been knocked around um, has had extremely favourable returns. Um, we call, we, I should say, this was designated by um, by one of the brokers around town, the Wax Stocks, um, which is a take on the US fangs. But these companies have performed amazing growth. And one of the attractions is these companies are high growth, um, but they're also relatively light on capital utility. If you're a mining company, 
um, you basically have to go out if you want to expand your business. You have to buy or build new mines. That's a lot more um, capital intensity. Uh, you've got to acquire land, permits, equipment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and you could apply the same thing to elements of the retail um, and uh, you know retail, uh, real estate, uh, and, and a number of those industries. Even um, you know even um, today in, in quite a lot of financial services. Um, if we look at the second bar chart there, we see IPO uh, and secondary raisings during 2015, 2019. Um, you know, we actually saw a number of large IPOs uh, during that period. That was actually WiseTech and MYOB, and I think Link making up the bulk of that. Um, but then we've seen what we've seen is a relative stability um, you know, of IPOs um, and very, very high growth um, in secondary capital raised. And I think um, yeah, this is an important point I, I, I think worth making as well, and that is that the secondary capital is being used uh, you know, for M&A, funding growth, um, but it's actually, as I said, not in these businesses really used um, you know, for been through this crisis. We've been through a range of companies, uh, travel companies, hospitality companies, a range having to tap the market for emergency capital. Um, and tech companies have, uh, you know, if they've had to do some equity raisings during that period, they've usually been expansionary. Uh, very, very few by number have actually been tapping the market for COVID related capital uh, reasons. So in February this year, just before the market sell off, uh, we launched the S&P ASX All Technology Industry. It was launched in February um, uh, with 46 constituents. Market cap of those constituents was $110 billion. Um, an investable index, and by that what we mean is an index uh, that money uh, could follow, uh, and we'll talk about that money uh, a little bit in a second. And you can see at the top line there, um, the top 10 constituents, um, uh, the top 10 constituents on launch. Um, why does the chart go back to 2014? Uh, firstly, uh, we back, we, we, we've got a methodology, so it's very easy just to back solve what companies, what, what that would have looked like uh, during that period. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, for the bulk of that period, it has materially outperformed the underlying um, benchmark for, um, for mid caps, the S&P ASX 300. Why did we wait till February? Um, well, we didn't wait till February because we thought there was gonna be a massive sell-off straight afterwards. I mean, the reality is creating an index is a relatively um, time consuming and very, very precise um, business. You, you need to have um, all the moving parts right. The reality is we, we, we toyed this with for two or three years and we just did not have the number of companies to make it, uh, one, you know, I can, we can talk about investable um, on a range of things, but one key about investability is that it's got a large diverse pool of companies um, and that the underlying in that uh, were uh, are liquid securities. Um, and let's remember, you know, some of these companies, uh, when we would have launched this uh, five years ago, Afterpay, um, Altium, uh, Appen, some of the bigger ones would have been sort of two, three, four hundred million dollar companies. So we really see, saw the tech companies come into their own. Um, and that was uh, when we made the decision to finally go with this from woe to go, it actually took around about six months. Um, quick run through there. This is our index on a page slide. This is actually um, the index had its first rebalance. Uh, which was announced uh, about uh, 10 days ago and action last Friday, uh, the 19th of June. Um, and uh, what we saw going into that index, if you see the top 10 from the previous slide, um, it's, it's moved around a little bit. Notably, Seek has gone into that index. Um, other companies that went into the index uh, include uh, Tyro, uh, Temple and Webster uh, and Nitro. Uh, and I think from um, those companies, um, you know, uh, Tyro and Nitro in particular had recently IPO'd and uh, according to the index rules, you need to have been listed for a minimum of three months. So they weren't captured in the original IPO. If you look on the far right, um, you'll see um, um, predominantly Australian companies. It won't surprise you that we're continuing to get very, very good uh, engagement uh, from uh, New Zealand, um, which uh, you know, uh, you know, we're, which we're we're the largest capital market in that uh, in that region for them. Um, and for um, US and Ireland, we've got good engagement uh, internationally from some mid cap companies that um, you know are, are looking at the uh, you know some of the some of the benefits of coming to ASX that don't exist uh, in their home markets. So overall, 
I think we're very, very happy with this and we're very, very optimistic about the future of companies coming to market um, that will qualify for this index. So to wrap up, um, got a photograph here of uh, um, the largest listing we had last year, which was Tyro. Pictured there, many of you will know David Thody, who actually I'm interviewing this afternoon, I don't mind sharing, uh, to talk about this index in a separate matter, uh, and the CEO of Tyro, Robbie Cook. Um, again, Tyro was a great performance. Um, so why are companies listing and why is this interesting? Firstly, we've got one board here, so companies can come to market, particularly some of those mid-cap companies uh, that, uh, that in foreign markets might find the cost of coming to market more expensive. You can get access to the main board. Um, you can get um, relatively early stage institutional coverage uh, and research. I think with the launch of our index, I think with the performance of that index, I think with the number of companies we've got in that index, you know, it's indisputable now um, that we're a genuine tech market for listings. We have a large portion of our market, not just funded by domestic Australian super, um, but we could get good international demand as well. And through our indices, the 200, the 300, the all odds, and now the all tech, there are early index inclusion opportunities for a range of technology companies. And most importantly, most importantly of all, um, we have a fantastic ETF that's now tracking this index, um, BetaShares ATEC um, that Alistair is going to talk about. But this makes an enormous difference to the credibility of the index and also the optionality um, for investors to get diversity. So um, for that, um, thank you again, Alistair, and I'll hand to you. Thank you. Max, thank you very much. That's extremely insightful from your end. Um, so as you, as you mentioned, BetaShares has launched the BetaShares Australian Technology ETF, which can be bought and sold using the ticker ATEC, A-T-E-C. I just want to give you a quick perspective from our end as to why we were so excited to join the space, but also a bit around the how. Max touched on it, but if you look at technology and particularly the growth in the space from a global standpoint, it's since the global financial crisis in a world that's really been suffering for economic growth, investors have been drawn to companies offering stable earnings that can um, really deliver on a consistent basis. And technology has been at the heart of this, particularly in the US. And again, Max mentioned the S&P 500 index as the US market. Over 20% of the market is now technology, and that doesn't include communication services, as you can see in the chart here in that light gray line in the middle, which contains companies such as Facebook and Google. So when you combine those together, you've got a total of around a third of the market in the US. This translates on a global scale as well, as you can see on the left-hand side of the chart. In Australia, we have an extremely concentrated market and the bulk of the market has been made up of banks and resources which are highly established and may, may potentially lack the same level of growth potential as the technology space. Despite the fact that we've seen more technology companies come to market than in any other sector and despite the fact that the market cap has grown fourfold in the last five years, Technology still only represents around 3% of the Australian market. And that is what makes it so exciting for us and why we wanted to bring investors a product such as ATEC, so that investors can upweight domestic technology whilst taking part in the rapid growth and building robust and diversified portfolios. The key thing is technology these days goes beyond just internet and the old IT label. It spans across a range of different industries. The All Technology Index covers a load of innovative technology oriented companies across a range of different industries, all of whom use technology to enhance efficiency and development within their field. The index also looks to include companies which may not have made it into the ASX 300 yet and is eligible for IPOs on quarterly rebalance. So that makes it really exciting for getting on board some of these really new growth companies with all the potential ahead of them. If you look under the hood, some of these names you will be familiar with. Afterpay is 
uh, an obvious one, a leader in its field globally. REA or realestate.com, car sales, domain holdings, all of which have transformed the way that we buy and sell cars in modern times. But if you look further down the list, there are many others that, whilst they might not be so familiar in our day-to-day -day lives, they're still building a global footprint. <laughs> WiseTech was touched upon, offers international and domestic logistics cloud-based software. Possibly not something that's coming up in your day-to-day -day activity, but they work with over 12,000 businesses across 150 countries worldwide. Appen is another interesting one. They actually build and refine the data used by machine learning and cloud-based systems. They're used by other technology companies and government departments. So these are companies which, if you're not an expert in the field, may sound complex, but really are revolutionizing the way that we do business and supply chains there. However, with this and with the complicated nature of it, Understanding an emerging theme and investing in single stock names can be a difficult process and present challenges to investors. If you look at the difference in some of the individual stock names and their returns over the last 12 months, the differences between the top winners and the losers can be huge. This is some of the top three winners and losers across the last 12 months. You have Data3 on the left-hand side, they're an IT and cloud computing software company, have even through the COVID crisis, put, risen by nearly 200% in the last 12 months. On the flip side, you have a company such as Webjet, and we can all see what's happening to flights at the moment, fallen by 60% in what a few months ago was a relatively unforeseen environment. So you can have these events that really can knock your stocks around. And whilst the individual names can vary in their own performance, returns from one year to the next can also be drastically different. This slide in the orange looks at some of the best performers in the 12 months leading up to this time last year, so May 2019. And in the gray is their stock returns or price returns for the past 12 months up until the end of May this year. And you can see the difference between last year's returns and this year can be extremely, um, can be huge. Some of the best uh, performers last year, for instance, Nearmap, who operate um, aerial imaging for business locations, did 275% last year. And this month is down, or this year, sorry, is down 32%. On the flip side, the opposite can be true. Companies which had a relatively poor year last year into May can do extremely well. And I'll pick Kogan from the middle here, down significantly last year, but has doubled its value with the tailwinds of being a low cost e-commerce business in a COVID crisis. So again, some of these things you may not have necessarily foreseen. This is why we find diversification is so important and particularly across the entire index. Over the past five years, ATEX index has performed around 15% year on year. This is 11.5% outperformance each year versus the ASX 200 or the broad Australian market. So whilst picking the next afterpay can be extremely difficult, investing in the broad thematic as a whole through an index or an ETF that aims to track that index can enable you to access the space and grow with it and provide alpha to your portfolio and outperformance first broad global benchmarks. Now, one question we get from time to time is, why would you not do an equally weighted portfolio of Australian technology? Now, the index itself and ATEC use a market cap weighted methodology. So essentially allocate more money to the larger companies and less to the smaller. We find this is extremely important in an emerging thematic. It enables more momentum to go to those companies which are fighting for leadership within their space, and you allow market forces to dictate which ones lead throughout time. In contrast, an equally weighted portfolio ends up selling your winners regularly and buying back your losers. 
to give you an example of an emerging thematic from some time ago, you can look at the mobile or smartphone industry in 2007. Back at the launch of the first iPhone, Nokia was actually a larger company than Apple, and Black, uh, BlackBerry was also a leader in the space. If you had looked to play the smartphone thematic from 2000, you'd have been selling your Apple shares and buying, buying back your Nokia and your Blackberries instead of allowing Apple's dominance to rise through an increase in your portfolio. You can probably look in your pocket and decide which of those strategies would have been the best over that period. But to give you some numbers, since then, Nokia's share price is down 80% to the end of May, and Blackberries is down 95%. So when you are investing in a new thematic where there are unknowns in the future, actually allowing survivorship to take place can be extremely important to ensure that you're allocating more money to the winners and not rebalancing into your losers all of the time. So as mentioned, investors can access the Australian, um, Australian technology thematic through the BeachShares S&P ASX Australian Technology ETF, which can be bought and sold using the ticker ATEC. The fund aims to replicate the S&P ASX All Technology Index by holding all companies within the index, so a full replication methodology, which currently contains around 50 stocks since the last rebalance. You can access all of these 50 names in a single trade using that ticker ATEC. So really to summarize, ATEC looks to really facilitate broad investment in the Australian, uh, Australian technology thematic, providing more opportunities to investors, enabling them to diversify their portfolio, but also to facilitate more growth within the industry with more capital being allocated to these companies which are trying to grow within their field. Despite the rapid growth, Australian technology still forms a very small part of the Australian market and still contains significant growth potential. You can buy ATEC for 0.48% per annum is the management fee, and it is bought and sold on the ASX using the ticker ATEC, ATEC. Just very quickly, in order to buy and sell ETFs, it's an extremely simple process. You just need a brokerage account or can speak to a financial advisor. You use the ticket code of the fund, in this case, ATEC, and minimum investment sizes are very small, typically around $500 from your broker, and you can buy increments of one unit. ATEC is currently trading between $17 and $18. Best practice, please use limit orders. This will enable you to get the price that you think is fair rather than taking out the entire market and avoid trading in the match in the opening and closing auction when all of the holdings might not be trading. For more information on ETFs, liquidity, or the ATEC and the index, please visit our website or the ASAX website. And just finally, things to consider. There's investment risk as we covered. Please read the PDS, speak to a financial advisor. None of this was taking into account anyone's personal circumstances and past performance is not indicative of future returns. With that, we've had quite a lot of questions that have come in um, and would be happy to answer those now. There was one I saw here for you, Max. Um, so so uh, one, one question for you just quickly there, Max. Um, why would US technology companies choose to list on the ASX? You touched on yeah. some of the advantages of the ASX, but that was one that came to mind. I, I saw that question came uh, from James Waggett, uh, who is a old work colleague. So I'll make a special call out to James. We actually began our career together as retail brokers. I won't <laughs> say how long ago. So great question. Um, look, I, I, I think there's a few reasons for that, but look, I, I, I think, the, 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 the two macros to begin with are firstly, um, uh, post, post the collapse of Enron in the United States, there's been a range of uh, uh, high level of restrictions that have come into that market that have made going public very, very um, expensive. Most pronounced in that is the Sarbanes-Oxley uh, legislation. Uh, which has uh, massive flow-on implications for companies uh, uh, across all uh, subsidiaries and service providers. So, 
Um, that that ultimately has manifest if you, and I, 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 I again, get the time machine out. Um, if you go back to 1999, 1998, Amazon, Netflix, these companies IPO, believe it or not, with market caps of two, three, four hundred million dollars. Every tech company that's listed of note in the last uh, 18 months when the tech market really reopened in the US have had market caps, well, I'll, I'll give you the range, it's 5 billion, but really it's 10 to 60 billion being Uber. Um, and so um, that means that if you are in that earlier stage uh, uh, of your life, um, up until now, there have been relatively few options. Um, uh, uh, private or venture capital only want to keep throwing money at companies that are, you know, the Ubers of the world that are growing uh, their growth rate and their customer grade at, at, at three, four, five hundred percent. A lot of the companies that we're talking about, uh, talking to in the US, have still got what we would consider to be attractive growth dynamics, sustainable growth, 20, 30, 50 percent. But if they're looking for funding, uh, from the VC market, the terms are very, very unfavourable. Um, and what we find when we speak to founders, they are um, inevitably, inevitably they are being pushed into what they call premature trade sales. So for us, ASX uh, pre presents the opportunity for those to test a public market option. Um, it also, as we've touched on today, uh, if, if they are in that sort of zone of generating sort of, you know, 15, 20 million dollars of revenue, and they've got um, a sustainable business, and they've got a degree of, you know, relatively sort of, um, you know, cash cash flow positive. They'll get a good engagement. They'll good get a good story down here on those metrics. They're a company that will generally have market caps of sort of, you know, 300 to 500 million dollars, and that puts them in the range of getting into a number of our early stage benchmark indices. The opportunity for those companies to go public, costs aside. Um, in the US and get um, institutional research and institutional coverage are, uh, are almost non-existent. So um, the final thing I will say there, of course, is that um, you know some of these companies too, uh, you know, we've had two prominent um, uh, FinPay services, uh, Sezzle and Split It List in the last um, you know, 12 months. So some of these companies are seeing uh, businesses comps um, uh, to them being you know, Afterpay and Zip. Um, and so those companies are actually, uh, you know, some of those companies from foreign markets are seeing uh, Australia as an, uh, uh, you know, as an attractive listing market for getting comparable valuations. Perfect. Thank you, Max. One question we've had a couple actually is around distributions. Um, will the fund pay dividends it receives? Absolutely. So as a managed investment trust, uh, an ETF, it must pay through any capital gains and distributions it receives to unit holders. One question around the yield. So the historical 12 month yield of the index was at the end of May, 1.2%. Now that's not necessarily a certainty going forward, but it gives you an idea. Technology companies are not traditionally huge yield, play, yield plays. They tend to invest as much of their capital back into their business as they can. Oh, yeah, I, I've got, I see one there. How many tech uh, I, IPOs are in the pipeline at present from Kinsey? Look, I, I mean, for us, the, the pipeline, I have to say, is very impressive. You know, I think we've been listing on average, we, we talked about it earlier, we've been listing on average, let, let's say about 15 tech companies a year. We would have been on track for that number this year, but clearly um, the market's been on pause for, I would say, the best part of sort of six months. But the pipeline, the pipeline has remained solid. Um, we have not found we were, you know, through forums like uh, web forums and um, conference calls, etc. You know, particularly with the foreign companies, we've maintained engagement. Most of those companies um, have been able to get short-term, you know, bridging finance or or, or pre-IPO capital injections. Um, so look, I, I think the I, I would say we are very, very optimistic about the pipeline. What does that number look like? I'd have to say, from what I can see, um, it's probably north of 20, but that's 20 that probably gets manifest, but sometime between now and the end of calendar 2021. Yeah, and 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 there are always companies that are looking at our market that we don't have visibility on as well. 
Another question um, based around transparency of the index and the fund. Now, one of the key benefits of an ETF is that the, the portfolio is fully transparent. So if you go to our website and go to the ATEC fund page, you will be able to see every single portfolio, every single portfolio holding in the fund on a daily basis. And that can be downloaded as an Excel spreadsheet. So you can see all the companies right, da uh, right down from your after base and working your way smaller, all of them will be listed out there for you. I saw a question, uh, I think it was from Geraldine, Irish uh, tech stocks can list. Well, look, the answer is yes, um, because Phineos is, is based in Dublin. But look, I, th I think from us, um, it's a broader sort of uh, strategy. Uh, for, for, for us, it's finding that right mix. We've, we've had a foreign tech listing strategy. Um, to begin with, it was very focused on uh, um, uh, what we called island states. These, these were countries that were sort of kind of geographic islands, but also had sub-optimal um, or sub-scale capital markets being New Zealand, Singapore, Israel and Ireland. We've had enormous success out of uh, out of uh, New Zealand, as you would know. Um, uh, look, I think Phineos um, is enormous success, even though it's only one because it's been such a um, successful listing. Um, Israel and Singapore, you know, um, it, yeah, well, Israel split it has been doing very well, so that's that's looking interesting. And there's a few really interesting things in the pipeline from Singapore. Um, but look, that, that that's the common theme when we add that into uh, when we add that into the earlier question about U.S. listings. You know, um, the, the, the U.S. is a huge market. Our challenge in the U.S. is finding those right opportunities. Um, and then it might not it might surprise you also, but we we are getting good engagement for foreign listings uh, out of both the U.K. Uh, where when I mentioned 20 in the pipeline, there's there's one really interesting um, substantive company in the UK, and uh, we're getting a little bit of engagement out of uh, out of Canada uh, as well. Perfect. Um, another question, just based on the ETF structure, is how does the management fee come out? So that 0.48% is taken out of the price returns you'll see of the index or the full total returns. You don't have to pay an annual subscription it is automatically taken out of performance on a daily basis. So over the course of the year, if you invested $10,000 in ATEC, it would have costed you $48 across the course of that year. Um, one question I see about uh, Zip, OpenPay and Splitted are not in the uh, ATEC list. Uh, look, it's a good question. Um, <laughs> The index is an S&P index, which means it's completely independently governed. Um, and it might surprise you. I mean, there's a thing called the GICs. The GICs are basically the industry, industry classification sectors um, uh, which, which determine uh, what you are, what sort of industry you are. Um, we don't determine that. Um, and so sometimes you'll see some things that are a little bit sort of you know, in inconsistent. And, um, you know, people have asked that Zip uh, is in one gigs, Afterpay is in another. Um, you know, that is ultimately in the determination of S&P. We, we do work with companies. We uh, introduce them to the people who manage the gigs codes, but ultimately that is in the hands of S&P to manage that. Um, a great example of that uh, is Seek, um, that actually was in employment services um, outside of this. Uh, they, they were not included in the same gigs classification as, uh, as REA um, and uh, car sales and companies like that, effectively doing what we call you know, internet and direct marketing. So uh, they, 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 their gigs was changed in April, which is why they qualified for this index. So I would just say our goal is really to have a broader index um, with more and more companies that look like technology companies um, and to work with S&P, uh, you know, to help manage that, but S&P ultimately and appropriately independently manage that process. Excellent. And um, I think um, in terms of questions, we've still got quite a few, but allowing, taking into account everyone's time there, I think we will leave it at that. Thank you, everyone, for joining us there. There's been very, um, very fortunate to have Max on board here and give his insights from the ASX. For any more information, please feel con free to contact Beta Shares either on the phone or through email, and we will be there to answer any questions you have. And again, more information is on ours and the ASX website. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Alistair.